Godfall is the first foray into the AAA scene for developers' counterplay games. A hack and slash looter RPG, this one piqued our interest as we're big fans of the Darksider in the DMC series. But, how does it hold up? Godfall takes place in Hyperion, a high fantasy realm split into three main areas, being Earth, Water and Air. You play as Orin, a Valorian knight on a one-man slaughtering spree to face their brother, and stop them ascending to godhood, and possibly bringing about the apocalypse in the process. The story as a whole is sort of just… there. It's shallow, and it plays out pretty much how you'd expect. Most of the world building is actually done via the Codex, which is filled out as you find journal entries scattered around the world. There has been a lot of effort put into the lore, with many items and enemies etc having a relatively in-depth description. Think Dark Souls, albeit with a little more story and a little less lore. Let's talk game world. As mentioned, the game is split into three main areas, with each of these areas actually being quite large. There are various void gates dotted around the areas, with each activated gate giving you the option of various missions within the area. At first, these will just be story missions, but as you progress, you will be able to complete tasks such as bonus missions or redoing boss fights to obtain rare items or perk points. The biggest downside here is that you don't have a map, so it can get quite easy to become lost, which is an issue only exasperated by the somewhat temperamental and more often than not unhelpful quest marker. This forces you to wonder, although this could technically be a good thing as gathering materials and loot chests is a key part of the game. As for moving around the world, control wise it's pretty smooth. We played the PC version and we used an Xbox controller, encountering few issues with the overall feel. Target locking is somewhat useless though, as it will only lock to whatever enemy is in front of you and it can't be used to turn towards an enemy instead forcing you to constantly remain on the camera controls to direct your attacks. You also can't switch targets on the fly if you have the wrong guy. If you don't play with Z-targeting normally, then this isn't going to bother you, but for those who do, it's going to require you to adjust. As for aiming at things to interact with them, this was mostly fine, although there were a few instances where the reticule was close enough in our mind, but it still didn't trigger the interaction prompt. Going back to the fighting, let's talk combat. As a hack and slash, combat is, naturally, one of the major points of the game, and to call it complex is a bit of an understatement. You have your standard light and heavy attacks, which can be chained together into a combo, with progressive combos building bonus damage. Using light attacks deals little damage, obviously, but it also builds soul shatter, shown as a white block on the enemy's health bar. Switching to a heavy attack then does the normal amount of damage, plus it wipes out any soul shattered health too. We actually like this, as it forces you to mix and match the attack types. Oh, and if you and your enemy swing swords at the same time, they bounce off each other, with neither side taking damage. To which we say, thank you. Seriously, why isn't this a more common thing? Talking of time, you also have timed attacks, which require you to leave a slight delay during the combo in order to enact a different attack, such as a wide sweep or a flurry. Then you have weapon techniques, which are often ranged or high damage moves that can only be used when the bar is full. Then there's polarity attacks, which deal massive stun damage to all nearby enemies when switching between weapons after they become fully charged. Then there's weak points, which need to be hit at the right time and aimed at to deal further increased damage. Oh, and all of these vary between the five weapon types. Long swords, pole arms, dual blades, great swords and hammers, with each having pros and cons to each situation. Great swords, for example, do massive sweeping damage, but they're slow. Long swords are fast, but they have a very short reach. On the defensive side, you have two options. The first is the shield, which is actually a weapon in and of itself, with you being able to weave in stun attacks or simply lob it at the back of an enemy's head for a satisfying thunk. This shield is also used to parry or block attacks, with a well-timed parry leaving the enemies open for you to deal the hurt. The second defence then is a dodge, which we highly recommend upgrading quickly to include the slide, as the main dodge is extremely short range, and it's pretty useless for gaining ground quickly. All of this sounds like it builds for an in-depth and enjoyable combat system, and for the most part, it does. There is however one niggling issue. It's not possible to break out of an attack animation to dodge or parry, 
which can at times feel as though it breaks the flow of combat. With some long attacks, this makes sense, but there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to lift your shield during a simple sword strike. This can slow combat down at times, making it more deliberate and less frantic. We suspect that this was a design decision, and we understand the logic behind it, but there needs to be some balance here. Let's talk the rest of your equipment. As is par for the course in an ARPG, you have various additional items which can be equipped to your person, such as rings, necklaces and charms, each of which provides additional health, damage etc, as well as various supplementary effects such as increased crit chance or status damage, or even weapon specific bonuses such as increased greatsword damage. All of this equipment, as well as your weapons, comes in one of several rarities, with it being possible to upgrade the rarity for the right materials, as well as upgrade the items up to 5 times. If you have an item you don't want, simply break it down into materials to boost the ones that you do want. Finally, we have your armour or valour plates. There are plenty to choose from, with each having various augment slots and differing abilities when triggering Archon Fury. Oh yeah, that's another part of combat by the way. As for the things you'll be fighting, enemies are pretty well varied, with each area having its own collection of enemy types and subtypes. For the most part, these can be dealt with the same way. Dodge, swing, dodge, kill. However, there are a few dotted around that do require some tact and thought, which is good to see. The mini bosses are challenging and quite unique between themselves, with the main boss fights being pretty good. Finally, let's talk about the upgrade system. This is quite extensive, with 25 different talent items, each upgradable 5 times. These vary from new attacks to stat buffs, and there's more than enough variants here to really min-max and play as you want. Aesthetics wise, it's a very pretty game, with the armors and weapons especially all looking fantastic. There are some moments, mostly in the in-engine cutscenes, where there are some blemishes, but overall the high contrast and realistic art style in the wildly varying settings is very pleasing. Sound wise, it's also a win, ambient sounds are pretty good, but unfortunately the music is used somewhat sparingly, which is a big letdown, as the music is actually really good. To wrap it up then, Godfall is a genuinely enjoyable game if you're a hack and slash fan, but it does suffer in a few places, namely the inability to break out of attacks, the lacklustre storytelling, and at later points it does get very repetitive. There are a couple of other issues too which may cause concern for some. The load times aren't terrible, but they are long enough and frequent enough that on PC this needs to be installed on an SSD. Console owners aren't going to see this problem. Additionally, this is an always online game, which may be off-putting to some people. All things considered, it scores 6.5 out of 10 from us, being overall enjoyable, better than average, but it's nothing special. As for its value proposition, with around 25 hours of gameplay, at least in our playthrough, the asking price of £50, or £70 on console, is a little high for what it delivers, especially as it's not for everyone. For those who enjoyed Anthem or Destiny, and they want a hack and slash version, wait for it to hit around £40, and then go for it. For those who are on the fence, wait for it to drop lower. Leave your thoughts down below, and while you're there, make sure to like, sub, and all of that. And with that, we thank you for watching, and we'll catch y'all next time.